I stopped taking pictures and posting them without people's permission because I had a couple situations that came up. I took a picture of one guy holding hands with a girl and then I got a message and he said that I have a girlfriend that's not my girlfriend. He said, can uh, you please take, and he didn't know that I took his picture. Hey, this is Chaz and welcome to my world from my living room. Today we're gonna to talk to Johnny Cirillo. We're gonna talk about how his family has inspired his Instagram page of over 1 million followers, his favorite lens to capture his street style, and his highly anticipated first book. So, sit back, relax, and welcome to my world from my living room. Yes, this is Chaz. Welcome to my living room once again. Uh, but this time you can see I have a visitor, a guest. It's a cozy living room. Thank you so much. Yes, it's a living room. Very nice in here. Nobody gets to do this. I'm sure you're invited. I've never done a podcast from a living room before. Well, I'm glad yeah. you're in mine because- Thank you for uh, inviting makes... me to your home. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you for being here. Yeah. I think that um, I want to start by, who are you? You're in my house. Who are you? I'm a stranger. You don't want me here. <laughs> I'm not safe to be around, no. Uh, I'm a guy that we met. We met on the street, right? Yeah, we met on the street. I, I have a, let me think. We were in Soho, I think. Yeah, Soho. And we were both taking pictures that day. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what. I think I saw you. That's what it was. Okay. I saw you because I was doing some street stuff and yeah. I saw you shooting. I think you had a really dope jacket on. Oh yeah, you took my photo, I, I think. I took your photo. First, and yeah. I, yeah, the first time, and and it was like touche because we're both kind of like met each that's other. That's right. That's and, right. And so I was like, "Yo!" And then you gave me a sticker mm -hmm. after I shot because I wanted to give. I'm like, "Hey, man, I, I want to give you the video. You know, I want to give you the photo." Yeah. Uh, how do I find you? And then you gave me a sticker, and I'm like, da, 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 da. "Oh, yo, <laughs> it's the guy." And I'm like, I don't know, I've, I've probably been following you at this point for probably a couple of years. Yeah, I'm like behind the scenes, so a lot of people don't know yeah. exactly who I am. And then uh, yeah. you know, I'm behind. I'm always behind the camera. So. Yeah, but, as I see you now with your hat, which is amazing. The Watching New York hat. Yeah, yeah, nice. which I think you're selling those now, aren't you? Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, a company, this New York guy, his company's called Bon Giorno. He makes the hats, corduroy hat, chain nice. stitch. There's like a little leather buckle in the back. Nice. Um, and they're selling them on Free People. Free People, the brand is selling them right now. Dope. Uh, there's blue and yellow. Okay. And um, not to like say anything, it's a good quality hat. Yeah, 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 you know, it I mean, looks I, like it. It's been through the ringer. I've been wearing this hat for a year. Because you love it. I do, I do love it. I mean, I'm, not, I don't, I'm, a, I'm not just wearing it because I like, oh, I'm promoting my, you know what I mean? I like I like the hat. It's a cozy, right. good, comfortable hat. It's a dope hat. Uh, but yeah, there's there's, that, you know, you can get one on, on at the Free People website. So now, why watching New York? Uh, the the genesis the of genesis. the name? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I went out and did this one day. I okay. took street fashion pictures for one day as a just something to do, mm -hmm. you know, with no intention at all of it being, a, you know, a thing that I was going to do with my life. Mm -hmm. Never had planned on that at all. Like m many things, as a photographer, you know, you go and you take a picture, you don't know that this could be the thing that like, you know, changes your whole life. Absolutely. But, but when I came home that day, Kristen was like, hey, you know, these are, I like these. These are cool. I think you should go do it again. And I had fun. I had fun doing it. So I went out and I did it again. And for about a year, I just took these pictures. Okay. Wow. Never posted them. Just was for fun. Mm -hmm. And I was enjoying myself. Kristen was like, hey, you should put these on Instagram. Not even like, don't do any tags. Like I'm just, she's like, if you just, just to have a place for them and yeah, archive, yeah, yeah. archive them. Absolutely, yeah. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'll archive them. I was gonna put them all on Instagram. And then we started talking about what should I call it? You know, I didn't want to just, I had like a page, Johnny Cirillo, like for a photography that mm. I, so we just started thinking about different names and she's big, she came up with it. She was like, uh, you know, I like to think of it and I know this is like overstepping my boundaries, but I like to think of it as photojournalism in a way that I'm okay. capturing what's happening in right, New York. Right. So she, in the simplest sense, was like, you know, you're watching New York. You're, you're watching what's happening. Why don't you just call it watching New York? So looked up the name, it was free. I said, all right. And we didn't put that much thought into it That's because amazing. I didn't think anybody would ever, to be honest, would be looking at the page. I just, it was really just an archive. I was posting, I don't know if I was posting every day or every couple of days or whatever, but I did that for another year, posting, archiving. Yeah. And then uh, 
you know, it started somehow, it, it tumbled into it. And That's it amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So family definitely had a role in kind of helping elevate oh, yeah. this thing for you. Oh, yeah. For right? Sure. Yeah. So you got the wifey. Yeah. Uh, now, I know you got Cash, too. Yeah. Yeah. You got a little boy Cash. Oh, he's this started so before dope. Cash. He's so dope. Like, he's a good guy. So he's cool. a good. He's a really cool kid. <laughs> he's into the. He's into great stuff. Things that I liked when I was a kid. You yeah. know what I mean? Like toys. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he's a. He's a rough. He's a rough boy, but he's also a very sweet boy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he. He's okay with getting being rough with and yeah. like like when we when we play fight, he wants to get rough. You know oh what wow! I mean? And yes. I, and it's fun. It's fun for me because he's so little. You yeah. Know? So. But um, yeah, he's so cute. But he's so also cute. very gentle and he's very sweet and he and he's got a very calm uh, energy, which mm -hmm. which I love. That's you know beautiful. What I mean? Yeah, he's he's great. Yeah, Gio, he he definitely has a lot of those same qualities too, and he's very malleable as well. And yeah. he's starting to have his own personality. I mean, Gio's twelve. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, it's a little bit different. But yeah, but uh, always changing. Now he's getting to be a teen. Oh my gosh! Don't even remind me, dude. So, what are your thoughts <laughs> on like uh, personally, like him, like? dating and stuff like that. Do you get weird about it? Well, you know, I, I'm, tr I'm, I'm at that crazy place right now where I'm wondering when is it time to have the talk. Right. Like, I don't even know. I, you never I, had to talk. I, I never really had to talk because I was raised by my single mom. Okay. So, and mom never had to talk with you? Not really. I just kind of figured it out. Sort yeah, of I know. You know? I think it's an awkward thing <clears throat> to do. I want it to be a sexual revolution. You okay. I mean, I think it should be. Yeah. Keep it open. Sure. Talk about things. Sure. Don't make it, you know what I mean? Don't make it weird. No. <laughs> because, but I also understand, like, you, this child enters your life. Right. So pure. Yeah. No tattoos, no piercings. Right. Pure. Naked, born, you know, just what was, they created themselves inside this woman. Mm hmm And then you, for so long, you protect them. Yeah. Right? All you're doing is protecting him. Yep. You start, I notice now that he's like five, you start not talking about certain things because you don't know if it's appropriate for them to be talking about that with other kids. Right. And the fear is that one of the kids that he likes, a friend, the parents will be like, I don't really want him hanging out with him because he talks about this and this. Right. A little too, a little too open. You know what I mean? So sometimes I feel like you're holding back a little bit to protect their future with friends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we try to keep it really open, you know, but I think it, it must be hard transitioning from little boy, he's still yeah. a little boy, sure. a kid, to talking about, you know, yeah. sex and life and, right. you know, but like when he asks like, where do babies come from? We don't say like, oh, it's just like a miracle grows in the belly. We're right. like, yo, this is what happens, you know? Right. Could be weird for you to understand this, but this is what happens, you know? Yeah. So whatever, I don't know. Who knows if any, any of us are doing it right. <laughs> Well, Gio, he's he's smart and he gets it. And he gets undertones. Like, you know, if you're looking at a record, yeah. like there's the A side, yeah. which everybody knows the A side. Yeah. But it's the B side. Yeah. Right. It's the deep cuts. Yeah. Like yeah. I think he I think he dwells in that space a little bit more than the A side, which yeah, is yeah. great because, oh, awesome. because there's some things that nuance can really kind of tell him versus oh, yeah. like the actual thing. Like, yeah. hey, you know, is be he, careful of that. <laughs> is he still like a little boy or is he starting to become like more grown? Because 12, he's, he's you know. He's, 12. Could go either way. He he's he's in that weird spot, but I must say he's probably older than his age. Okay. Because he's around adults a lot. Yeah. And he's also a city kid. He's also a city kid. Yeah. So he's street smart, but he's also, I think he definitely, you know, has the the book smarts too, because mm -hmm. he goes to Mark Twain. I don't know if you know the different schools no. here, but Mark Twain is a gifted and talented school. He actually is there for science. Oh, awesome. So um he's Brainiac. book smart as well. Great. But his personality is kind of like Fresh Prince. Okay. So he wants to be everybody's friend and that sort of thing. Like what kind of Fresh Prince? Are we talking Slap and Chris Rock? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I shouldn't have even brought that up. Edit that. Edit that. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> <laughs> but yo, was that a wild moment though or what? Yeah, Were you watching crazy. when that happened? I, I was. I, I love the Oscars. I, I thought it was a sketch. The Oscars is my Super Bowl. I did yeah. not think it was a sketch. I, I immediately thought that it was something real that happened. I texted yeah. my friends as he was walking away, like, yo, what the f was that? Yo. Can we curse on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Dude, that was so wild. Yeah. But when, no, so Gio okay. <laughs> was, was Fresh Prince back when he was naive, when he was mouthing the other actors' lines as he was talking to Oh, him. really? Like that Will Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I love Will Smith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I love mean, Will Smith. I grew up with that guy. You know, let me tell you something. He's been probably a beacon of fatherhood. Yeah. Him and Bill Cosby, but 
Yeah. I mean, back then, and I'm only talking back then. I'm not forget about the stuff now. Back then, when I was yeah. growing up, oh dude, Bill Cosby was my dude. My, one he of my the, old... he was my dad on TV. Of course, because I didn't have him. He was everybody's dad. Yeah. He was, and his stand up in the brown suit. You know the stand up they did in the oh, brown suit. Yes. Very wholesome. Yeah. Like you would have never thought that all these things were going on. Yeah. And now it's tainted to me. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, it's hard for me to separate what this guy has done, which is. I mean, to be fair, it's it's oh, awful. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. It, you know, For the sure. guy was a monster that we didn't know about, and like, I loved him. Yeah. He was my favorite. Oh yeah. He was Absolutely. my favorite. We, I didn't miss an episode of that show. The Huxtables to me were like the coolest family, the family that you wanted to be like. You know what I mean? And um, then all that stuff came out, and you're like, whoa, that changes the way I feel about it, which is so sad. It is sad. Um, I must say, you know, growing up as a young black boy and having a single mom. Yeah. Like my soul was kind of searching for that, mm -hmm. that male figure yeah. that allowed me to at least, if nothing else, be inspired to be a great dad. Yeah. You know, because I'm like, man, all oh. those different personalities, and, also, and he's able to manage them. He was really smart. Yeah. He was tough mm -hmm. when he needed to be, but he was so fair yeah. with the kids. And funny. Funny. You know what I mean? The funny was the levity in the midst of those, like, heavy punishments. Yes. You know? Totally. Because it's like, Pseudo embarrassment. Yeah. If you really like, you know, that's almost their punishment. But there was some of, heavy. Sorry, say it. Finish, finish. No, no, no. I mean, I think you know. I think some of the some of those type of punishments were having them look at themselves and be embarrassed by what, yeah, what they did. Mm -hmm. And that was almost their punishment. It mm -hmm. wasn't like go time out oh, yeah. go in your room. It yeah. was just kind of like, yeah, no, you're gonna sit in this for a while. Definitely. <laughs> I remember some like heavy moments with Theo in his bedroom when you were like, whoa. Like I was laughing a moment ago. Now it's like got heavy in here, you know. What right. I mean? But it was it it did that. It navigated that space really well. Sure. Um, I don't mean to like uh, bring down a guy that you just said was like one of your heroes. I, no, I you know, no, no, no. It, we feel the same way. Okay, okay. We feel yeah. the same way. Yeah. It's but so disappointing. I was just using him as an example yeah. of me growing up. Yeah. And I don't feel that way about Will Smith. <clears throat> right. He just. I was just shocked right. and disappointed. Sure. But I wasn't like, oh, he's a monster. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. I don't think he's. Drugging people, and right. stuff like that. <laughs> the most awful thing. I don't know how we got to this part of the conversation. But I'm kind of glad we're here. I never yeah. talked about it. No, and that's the thing. I mean, I just want to. The idea and the vibe behind what I'm doing is essentially, you know, talking about how we're fusing creativity and parenthood. Yeah. You know, and I believe you bring a really unique insight to that because you have a wife and a son, and mm -hmm. I have a wife and a son, mm -hmm. but I also have co-parent situation mm -hmm. too. So there's a lot of different personalities that I'm navigating I'm sure. as it relates to making sure everybody gets along, making Definitely. sure everybody respects each other's boundaries and yeah. space, uh, making sure Gio gets what he needs from my perspective, but also making sure that we're on the same page. So there's a yeah. lot of things going on. You're not but, there <laughs> to correct something that somebody else might be teaching him. And right. That's got to be really, you know, he comes home yeah. and you're like, where'd you learn that from? Right. You know what I mean, like in our house, Kristen says something and I'm like, whoa, that was harsh. Oh. And she's like, yeah, maybe that was a little, or vice versa, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. So I can see that must be really tough. Yeah. But it, you know, I think it's just the way you navigate it. At yeah. the end of the day, you just really want to, once you make the child the, the center focal point and you leave all the other stuff out, mm -hmm. out the door, like, you know, who somebody's dating or what they're doing, mm -hmm. and you start getting in their business, then you're not tending to your own. Totally. So for me, I'm more from the place of, okay, this is what we're doing, this is what we're chose to do, or hey, if we need to collaborate on something with school yeah. or any after school activities, we can talk about that, come to a general consensus, and we just go with that. Yeah. You know, there isn't any room for, you know, emotions mm -hmm. at, this, at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he gets in trouble, we both come together as parents, yeah. and we both kind of help rectify the situation. Right. In which we've had that. We've had- That's you know, your common ground. Never, that's our common ground. We've yeah. had PTA meetings, and you would never know, you know, known that we weren't together. Yeah. On emails, as teachers try to reach us, we're separate. <laughs> right, right, right. That's but, great, that's yeah. great. You oh, know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Healthier for the kid, too. Absolutely. Probably, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't, there was, maybe there was negative energy floating around and he could pick that up. And now it's like, you guys figured out a way to do it in a smart way. Absolutely. Healthy way. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, raising these kids nowadays, I mean, especially when it comes to, you know, back to your question about, you know, about this dating thing. I'd be interested to start seeing, he, he's alluded to like when he was in like fourth, 
fourth grade, fourth or fifth grade, he was like, oh yeah, my girlfriend, and da, 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 yeah, my yeah, girlfriend. And you know, it's cute to hear, yeah. but I'm like, I wasn't even ready to entertain that from know, the standpoint of having a talk with him. Right. But at 12, when he's saying, you know, now that I'm seeing his text messages, because he's got a phone now, yeah. I'm seeing his text messages texting to this girl that yeah. he likes. I'm just like, oh. Yeah, yeah. In my mind, I'm kind of put, I would never put it out there for him yet, because I don't want to embarrass him. But I'm kind of keeping tabs. Yeah. To where I'm like, oh, he's starting to get a little girl. He's I fancy. also think also at that <laughs> age, you're so impressionable and so enamored with the idea of the opposite sex sure, or sure. the same sex, whatever is your preference. But sure. like, you know, that when those feelings kick in, I feel like all it takes is one one girl to show interest yeah. and be like, take control. Right. Where you're like, whoa, all of a sudden I'm going down this road that I didn't know I was going down a right. moment ago. You know, so well, it can happen quick. 12, 13, that's when it happens. That's when it happens. And I must say that I, I felt that I've done a good job as it relates to navigating him not feeling weird or yeah, bad about so. anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because some things, you know, they may feel a certain way because you know, somebody at school said it once, and now all of a sudden they're weird around you. You're like, you're like wait, where's that coming from? Right, right. Did someone say anything about, no. you know, you having buck teeth? I mean, whatever it is. Kids like, are you, tough. Kids are tough. So tough. So you almost have to undo a lot of that stuff yeah. that they're being influenced by at school and For other sure. places. But, you know, we pre you know, me and his mom, we do a great job in navigating that, but the creative pursuit of it, I mean, getting back to photography, I mean, how does that work with you and Cash? Cash has his own creative outlets. He likes to color and draw, but he's really into it. He's really right now into making books. Oh. Right? So he draws a ton of pictures. Okay. Gives me maybe 20 pages with all these monsters on it and stuff. I should show you some pictures. They're really cool, actually. Oh, wow. Can I show you one of them? Yeah, so yeah, Can yeah. I do it right now? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me just show you, like, so he draws these pictures, and he's only five. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like here's a here's a picture that he just drew, okay? Okay. And it's like this Godzilla creature shooting fire up into the sky. There's trees. And he makes about 20 different versions of these okay. cartoon pictures. Okay. And then he sits down with me and he tells me which one, he puts them all in a row. Okay. You know, for the most part. And then he tells me what to write on each one. Mm -hmm. You know, first this monster came to town, then this monster. So he's doing in a story format. Yeah, he makes these stories. Nice. So I love it. I try to take him out with me and do pictures. And we do a lot of like, little photo walks of our own like right. in our neighborhood and stuff. Well, I'll give him a camera and we'll go for a walk around the neighborhood and take pictures of things. Yeah. We'll do like a, um, a scavenger hunt. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? Let's see if we can find this. Let's see if we can find that. Got you. But definitely my favorite is when he does, when he shoots street fashion of with Of course, me. absolutely. It, there's no thrill in the world like that to me where, especially if he gets excited about it or yeah. if he's like, can we try that again? And his pictures, are so unique to me because they're from so low down. Now I can get down low, right? but I'm faking it. Right. That's his perspective. So right. when you see it, it makes you think a little differently. Like, wow, that's what he sees. Yeah. And I love it. And you know, there was one, uh, I believe there was one photo or post that you posted to him, not the most recent one okay. at this point, um, yeah. that was like a little video, it was a reel. And so oh, yeah. he had taken a photo and dude, your exuberance about that moment was epic. Well, and I was like, that was the moment where I was like, you know what? A unique perspective of a creative that's doing essentially what I'm doing, but like his son really kind of embracing that and having a moment and seeing your excitement. That was like, oh yeah, I gotta have that. I mean, dude, our, in my opinion, time is our biggest currency. Absolutely. You know what I mean? The reason why I like photography and, and, and video, film, whatever you want to call it, is uh, because it freezes those moments, yep. right? So for years, many years, I did, uh, I was a wedding photographer. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that was, you know, before all this, um, you know, I did a lot of events and um, engagements, weddings, newborn photography, you know, mm -hmm. um, maternity. Capturing moments is what I like to do for other people, but I get a lot of enjoyment out of it, a ton of enjoyment. Got it. I get a real kick out of cap capturing a good moment. That day, my friend Anthony was there, and he was filming me teaching Cash what to do on the camera, right? I didn't know that he was filming. So when I saw that afterwards, Anthony actually, I don't know if he even told me until a few days later or whatever, I edited the picture I sent to Anthony. He's like, oh, I got it behind the scenes. I was like, you did? He no. sent it to me. And I was like, man, because in my mind, when I went home that day, I was like, that was so fun. You know what I mean? Being yeah. out in the streets with him, taking photos, he got this great shot and I loved it so much. So seeing the behind the scenes, which is a, 
it's basically my memory right. captured. Yeah. I get to re, re you know, because our minds, I think, will alter things that happen. You'll remember them a different way. That's how it happened. Right. And somebody caught that candidly, yeah. which is what I do. I do candid captures right. of people. So to see me and him candidly like that in a while, doing something that I love, trying to teach him what I love, was just, you know, an un unbelievable experience. To awesome. Like. Yeah. Yeah, so speaking of taking it to the streets with this fashion thing, so when did it get serious for you? There's one thing, like, you know, you you, you post here and there. Yeah. And, I mean, did you, I mean, gosh, with all the numbers you have now, what, you're at a million now? Yeah, 1.2 million. Hey, who's counting? Uh, <laughs> my agent. <laughs> Your agent? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, we, we have... Uh, uh, we have to send stats like every month of, you know, all everything. All there's wow. a whole list of things that you have to send them. I mean, month. I was kidding, but this is a serious thing. Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's my livelihood. It's what we do, you know. So I'm with this agency. They're called Next Collective. My agent's name is Reagan. She's good. She deals with me because I'm a hassle, and I know that. Like, you know, she she has a lot of influencers. I don't consider myself an influencer. More of a. Uh, somebody who's creating, con you know, not content, but someone who's creating things, a yeah. creative, I don't know. A photojournalist, I like to think, sure. just because I'm just documenting what I see. Um, so I'm older than the people that, you know, she's dealing with most of the people in their 20s, I'm in my 40s. I got you know, you. so he, all these people are very hip to what's going on, and I'm just kind of like, hey, I'm just, like, I'm, I take the picture and I post it. I don't know much more beyond that. Mm -hmm. But she's like, I need the stats. I need the insights. I'm like, I don't know where, where do I get the insights from? You know, like, yeah. so I'm like the old guy that right. like she has to deal with, but she's very good to me. Um, so yeah, so Reagan, Reagan basically gets me the jobs that I get to, that, you know, the companies that sponsor through the page. You know what I mean? So oh, that's awesome. Ads and stuff like that. She's in charge of all that stuff and basically managing the personalities that she manages, you know what I mean? So she corrects me if I do something that's not, you know, good for the brand. Okay. Yeah. So now the weddings, um, you know, doing couples things, you know, engagements, things like that. So eventually you got to street photography and photo journaling, as you call it. Yeah. Where was the inspiration from that? I, I don't want to say that I'm a photojournalist because I didn't <laughs> technically study to be a photojournalist. So sure. I don't want to take that away from anybody who's put in all the hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's the easiest way for me to explain it, I think. Got you it. Know? I've always done photography. I started photography in the 90s. Mom gave me a camera in 1994, you know what I mean? So, uh, and I did it as fun, capturing pictures of kids in junior high, Got you know? It. And then when high school came around, bad student, you know, <laughs> as far as grades and stuff goes, really bad. Uh -huh. Have a very hard time with, Social studies, science, math, summer school. Don't bring I me was back. In summer I still school. got nightmares. <laughs> yeah, so bad. Photography. When when electives came around and it was like, oh, you can choose four classes. You know, you could do art, you could do shop class, you could do mechanics. So I went into photography mostly as a way to uh, have like a free period, but because right. I know I like photography, but I wasn't going to take it that seriously. I didn't think. And then I started taking it more seriously. Mm -hmm. And I started getting really into it. I started learning the dark room. That's where I started, you know, developing my own film. Film, yes. I started there too. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, one of those electives. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then rolling my own film. And then after high school, I built my own dark room and I continued. And then, you know, I just, I never thought that it could be like a profession. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, eventually um, I started freelancing and doing small jobs, like not even jobs, let's not say jobs. I would ask all my friends like, hey, let me do like family photos, holiday photos. And then I just started sharing it naturally. Mm -hmm. Eventually it got to be a little bit bigger, you know what I mean? And then like I started getting people asking me like, hey, would you do an engagement photo shoot? And would you do, right. and whatever. So it just tumbled into a business. That got was it. a business. That was so now who was the influence? Cause I mean, there's been, if I could look back on some of the, some of the favorite, um, you know, Henri Cartier Brisson. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you got these street photographers. Mm -hmm. Like, um, that, you know, street photography and then street fashion and that sort of thing, they're different mediums, but I can't say that, you know, he was a direct, you know, inspiration for me, but doing what you're doing, I mean, that seems like it's, I mean, I know some people are doing, or have done that. So who, who would you say was your biggest inspiration? I think one of the reasons why I've always loved art so much is that I think I, you very rarely see people retire from art, which I loved. Right. You know what I mean? You're getting these, so true. like now you got Scorsese, I think he's 80. 
you know, I still mean, directing know. absolutely monster films. You know what Clint I mean? Clint Eastwood too. Clint which Eastwood. I actually was in he's a like film ninety five. You were in a film with him? Yeah. Which well, film? Not with him. He directed me in Jersey Boys. Really? I was in Jersey Boys. You got directed by him? Yeah. That's and I, cool. And I got a photo with him and everything. I got to see that. Yeah, yeah, you got to see it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a moment. For One sure. of my favorite Clint Eastwood. What's your favorite Clint Eastwood? Oh, God, Dirty Dozen. Nice. Yeah, I love that. Because that was the quintessential, like, Clint Eastwood movie. You know what's another good quintessential right? Clint Eastwood? That's my favorite. What? The Outlaw Josie Wales. You ever seen that one? No. Oh, please do yourself a favor. Okay. Stop okay. the podcast. <laughs> put it on. Get the popcorn. Boom. <laughs> no, it. it's great. It's, okay. it's a dynamite film. But yeah, so I, I would notice these artists, photographers, filmmakers, uh, painters, going until they couldn't go anymore. You know what right. I mean? And I thought that was a really admirable mm -hmm. thing to, to see. And, mm -hmm. to, uh, and Bill Cunningham was the New York Times street fashion photographer. Got it. And he worked until his 80s, until he died. He worked until he died. You know right. what I mean? And um, I don't know how old he was when he died. He must have been 80. I bet you he was 84, something like that. Mm. Uh, I got to look that up. I should know, but. Truth be told, this is a crazy, crazy little moment, a little nugget about this. One of my first dates with my now wife yeah. was at the Bill Cunningham exhibit. Oh, cool. Yeah. South Street Seaport? Y yeah. That was a it good was exhibit. A it was a his great exhibit. His camera was there. Yeah, his bike. And everything. He like, rode that bike. Yeah. And dude, he was zipping. And I, so from a distance, before I ever shot street fashion, I would look at his archive photos and I would look at what he was doing currently. And yeah. um, I just admired it. I was like, yeah. yo, this guy is in his 80s and he's like cooking through the streets, cap capturing all these beautiful moments. Yeah. So that's how it started, actually. The day that he passed away is the first day that I went out and, wow. took, and took pictures because I just as a way to honor him. Sure. You know? That's and, amazing. Um, that's beautiful. Yeah, but that's how that's how it started, mm -hmm. really. You know, but um, and then like I said, I just I just archived it for years, and I didn't really start um, getting into um, feeling a responsibility to post until probably probably four years after I started. I think. Got gotcha. Yeah. So now you're pretty fashionable. Like you got the cool jeans on with the paint splatter. You got the Garfield <laughs> vintage sweater on. You got the mustache and the hair. So you 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 have what you would shoot in the street. So well, I don't know. I, I think I, I would shoot. I, I mean, I came up. I rolled up on you and shot you. Yeah, that was nice. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't particularly think that I have great style. I um. I kind of like to dress in what's comfortable to me because I'm standing around a lot of the day. You know. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, but I wear what playing. I like. I mean, I remember one time I met up with you. And you had like the Gucci slides on, the the. the. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, you know, here's the thing though. That Kristen, a lot of times, is like, look, I had like Kmart slides on, oh, okay. and she's like, dude, you're out there all day. Some people are taking pictures of you and stuff. Right. Get some like nice slides. You can clean them and stuff. You right. know. So yeah, I did have the Gucci slides. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a fan of Gucci. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for Gucci. I'm like, I have a friend of mine. That, my weaknesses. That, that, I have a friend of mine that said Gucci. I may have to hook you up. Yeah. Not yeah. Me? Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Not Speaking me. of which, I want to uh, thank you and for you know giving me a call about that shoot for Brooklyn. Uh, magazine for oh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn magazine. magazine, yeah, that was amazing. I appreciate that because I we hadn't known each other very long, yeah. But it's a testament to you seeing me as someone that's a part of that ecosystem and that ethos that you're kind of going for, and to be one of those people, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, oh, I, I easy, never really easy appreciate decision. that. <laughs> you're a, a person that makes the job easy, and you're what I think makes New York great. You're oh, a part man. of that, you know, world that is what I enjoy photographing. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for personalities that are coming through their clothing. Oh, but then when you talk that. to them, there's a deeper layer there, which I've always enjoyed. You know what I mean? So I know yeah. you have a voice. Yeah. I like the things that you've said. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the Brooklyn Magazine thing, there's a little interview in there where, you know, we do. And you know, I didn't even get a copy yet. We got we got yeah, I don't have one Brooklyn either. Magazine, if you're watching this, we need to, we need a copy. Yeah, we need a copy. I, I know. I should be better about getting copies too <laughs> and giving them to people that, that are in there. But yeah, I, 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 I'm slacking, but. Yeah, no, um, I appreciate that. Because, you know, for me moving here, I didn't get my first opportunity to be in front of a, you know, a paparazzi type photographer or fashion photographer yeah. until uh, when I moved here back in 07. Okay. One of my first fashion weeks, I, I was with my son's mother at the time yeah. uh, before we had Gio, 
and we were both fashionable, or whatever. We went to uh, we went to the Cousteau show. Okay. Cousteau, I don't know if you remember Cousteau I know. design, uh, but it's really, really a Spanish um, brand. Okay. Anyway, he had a, a runway show, and as we were coming out, there were all the photographers like, hey, over here, blah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. that whole thing. And I had a friend of mine, Mange, he uh, shot us, me and my, me and my, my he son's sounds familiar. Who's that? Mange, he goes by Key Style on Instagram. Key Style on Instagram. So, um, I, I think I know him. Yeah, he does a name. lot of street, yeah, he does a lot of street fashion stuff. But anyway, he shot me, and this is before I was even a photographer. Okay. So over time, we had gotten to know each other because he's a dad. Mm -hmm. So once Gio came along and you know we, we had that commonality, yeah. we became friends on a deeper level, cool. far beyond that. But then you know when Fashion Week rolls around, he hits me up like, yo, you out in the street today? Yeah. So we would connect that way. But um, That's cool. But that was the first time where I was like, oh my God, he sees me as a fashion guy. And then he, he cool. called me up and had me come out for some, you know, some oh, shoots nice. as well. So it just became, so I'm like, I'm starting to grow into this whole New York fashion thing. Yeah. Because I've always, I'm coming from a small, I, I, I'm not coming from a small town directly, but I lived in Nashville for 10 years before yeah. I moved here. Right. So my thing there, I was a big fish in a little pond. So I was the way I am in Nashville. Right. And one of the only black guys on the scene. Right. Quote unquote. So I kind of already had that. Okay. But bringing that brand to New York, yeah. I knew I had to, you know, raise it up a little bit more. You remember yeah. Daffy's? Yeah, I love Daffy's. <sighs> I love I love that. Daffy's was my jam because Daffy's. You get treats. Yeah, you get treats. You never like, knew what you were gonna get. You Daffy's. never knew what you were gonna get. They had like the one offs, and you go there. And for me, when I first moved here, I found out that that was like the fashion hack. Oh, really? That was a fashion hack because you can get something cheaper but yeah. unique. Yeah. So I'm like, I'll get like a a couple of pieces. Totally. That were like my anchor pieces. That's a you bring up a good point. <laughs> what you just said. It, it, you're, you're, you're hitting the nail right on the head with what's going on in the climate right now, mm -hmm. which is, can I say something? Absolutely. This is the appeal of very high-end pieces yeah. and thrift shops. Mm. The very high-end pieces that are so expensive that the majority of us cannot afford. Absolutely. When somebody else is wearing that, it's like, oh, I, I haven't seen this. Right. And that's awesome. Right. I mean, then people get mad because it costs so much money. Right. But that's why thrift shops all of a sudden have become, you know, I don't know if I'll ever, like, I love this. Dude, that sweater I thrifted is this. epic. It, it's a Garfield sweater, you know yeah. what I mean? But like, what, what people like about it, and I'm not saying about this, about thrifting in general, is uh -huh. that you might not, because it's from the 80s. Yep. You know, you might not ever see it out Never. there. And people want that identity, you yep. know, of, oh, I have some, I'm not saying, oh, this is the one. Right. I'm just saying, that's part of the appeal. What I like about mm -hmm. thrifting and, and, you know, buying old clothes is that, and even if you did, it doesn't have the the, the breaks in it, the, what it's been through. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So Daffy's brought a little of that. Absolutely. Where, where you can find something that was old, but cool at right. a good price. Absolutely. And then you might not see it anymore. Because once things, you know, every season companies have clothes and then, that by the next season, you see it less and less and less. So after four, five, six seasons, yeah. you're like, oh, I remember that. That was old Ralph right. Lauren, you know what I right. mean? Like, So the older it gets, the cooler it gets. And or, it has more value, too. And it has more value, yeah. Because of its rarity. Also, the old clothes. You buy a sweater now, yeah. 2023, where are we? 2023, yeah. 2024, <laughs> maybe, when it comes out? Yeah. 2024. A sweater, I feel like it, it they fall apart. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not true. not all the best, but like these old sweaters. Because they're made the of 80s? polyester. Yeah. <laughs> and they, but they, they, they last forever. They do. You they know, do. they really do. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. That, that, that's, that was a cool thing about Daffy's is that you can find something unique in there. Yeah. So, that for me was like my fashion hack. And then buying a few of those pieces and then buying low, you know, you buy like something thrifted or you buy like something Zara or H&M or something just to kind of fill in the gaps. Yeah. You know? Oh, nothing wrong with any of that oh, stuff. Oh, no. Nothing. I buy all that stuff. Right. You know what me I mean? too. Like, and you do so, what you got to do. But at the end of the day, to be able to get to this place for me, yeah. you coming to me and befriending me and seeing me as someone that adds to the fabric of New York, that means a lot for me because that also speaks to my growth here in New York. Cool. You know, so I appreciate you from that standpoint. Amazing. Uh, as well as just a moment for that. And then other opportunities, you know, I'm on your short list of people on your Instagram feed. Close friends. Is, that really means a lot. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, to be able to, to be in that place, I it would behoove me to not have you be mm. a part of this. Um, and I know podcasts are what they are today, but I just want to speak to something different. I want to just have a casual conversation and, and just 
be humans. You Dude, know? this is the most casual thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just sitting on the couch. I'm forgetting that we're recording. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's the point. Yeah, and I'm glad, good. and it's good to you to say that too, because I, I know that the typical, you know, format. I had an idea what it was supposed to be. Yeah. But I didn't want to really subscribe to that. Yeah. I really wanted to just do it my own way. Cool. I mean, you could do a studio. I could rent somewhere. I can go on. Uh, what's the name of the place? Um, I can go on. Um, like a WeWork. Yeah, WeWork or what's, it, what's the one? It starts with a P, I believe. Mm. Uh, Y'all tell me in the comments because I don't know. <laughs> what that I don't know what it is. is. Um, I know what you're talking uh, about. Though. Yes, That's... you can rent a space for yeah. a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think that um, to be able to do it my own way. Uh, with no microphones uh, that are visible, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to just forget about that because yeah. you got to be focusing on so many different things. Oh, is my mouth close enough? Am I saying yeah. the right thing? Am I popping? And this, that, and the no, I don't need all that. I just need to have I, a conversation. I, I, I try as I've gotten older, I've noticed that I've become less of a perfectionist with certain things. Mm -hmm. I think that for me, I, I, if I have the idea now, I just want to do it. Right. And sometimes that trying to be a perfectionist has held me back. Yes. Where I've been like... It's been holding me back up until this podcast. Right. But no, sometimes you need it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sometimes it is good. And maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's my own fault, but like uh, I've been finding more lately that I just want to do the thing that I think about instead of... I, I'm. It's good to hear because I feel like I need to lean more into that because I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. When you see my place, you see the way that I live, I'm like... When I leave the house, there's there's a purpose. Yeah, you know, especially knowing that I'm taking you know 45 minutes to get to the city or something. It's it's got to be for more than one thing. Yeah, I and I want to be able to maximize my time no matter what. Yeah. So if I'm gonna put energy into this podcast or anything that I do, yeah, um, you know, me personally, I mean, I hate trends, and although this just so happens to be the new medium. It, it smelled of a trend, and I avoided podcasts like the yeah. plague. Yeah, yeah. Until I found a place that I can go, you know what? I can make it my own way. Sure. Yes, I want to see the template and the format of how it all works, but at the end of the day, I really want to say what I want to say. Yeah. And hope that, you know, it reaches or resonates with somebody. I'm sure it will. You know, at the end of the day. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, but but having you on is just, it's, it's, uh, it's an honor because I know the work you've put in Thanks, man. to I your brand, it. to who you are as a person, uh, your family, and everything. So, That's awesome. I yeah. appreciate that. So, uh, so what's next? You, a book. Book, right? By, by some miracle. <laughs> that was a statement, by the way, because I actually pre-ordered it, and you, you should too. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, it's, uh, I'm very, very thankful that yeah. somebody, ha you know, wanted to make a book. Um, and I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, uh, I'm proud of it. Yeah. Uh, I never in a million years thought that I would have made a book in my life. I, uh, I think that, you know, I got, I got lucky with mm -hmm. a lot of the things that happened and timing and stuff, but, uh, yeah, I have a book coming out. It's my street fashion from pretty much from the beginning. Wow. Um, and it's, um, it's street fashion A through Z. So, and it, every nice. letter of the alphabet, it's kind of. You know, A is accessories, B is, I don't, I don't even remember what bandanas, C is, mm. cardigans, D is. Oh, but there's multiple choices for each letter. So it's kind of in order in that way. Okay. Um, oh, that's, that's a cool concept. I love that. You know, it was Abrams. They came up with the concept. They, okay. You know, and um, they, they've been really good. They were great creatively. They let me really run wild. Nice. And put some musings in there. And um, there's some interviews. Nice. And uh, I think it's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just glad that something's gonna exist outside of a digital world, you know. And and that's beautiful. I mean, to have the tactile, like we yeah. need that. You know, we need yeah. to touch and feel pages and totally. feel, you know, the weight of the paper and yeah. you know those sort of things. Because I think we really get lost in the digital age right now. Uh, that even goes, you know, with photography in general. For sure. Uh, because you know, um, to blow up a piece and actually make an exhibit of it and make it art yeah. versus have it live on your phone or tablet or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's important. It, it's a lot more quality. Definitely. You know, uh, because that that's an investment. I went to um, uh, Harry Benson. You know Harry Benson, the photographer? A great don't. photographer. Oh yeah? Okay. Really, you should look into his work. Okay. You've definitely seen his photos before. I'm sure. He took, just trying to think off the top of my head, like his most famous, um, ever see the picture of the Beatles pillow fighting on the bed? 
No. It's like Paul, John, Ringo. Yeah. Uh, they're all there. Like, a, if you saw it, I bet really? you. Really? He took some very famous pictures of Muhammad Ali. There was a picture that he took of Muhammad Ali Which with one? the Beatles. Muhammad Ali's got his arm out, and he's like, all their heads are all lined up, and it was like he was kind of hitting all oh. their heads. Kate Moss, just the, everybody yeah. in the world. He's very, very well known, very famous photographer Amazing. from back in the day. Amazing. And I got to go to his house because I was assisting uh, another great photographer. Vicky Stevens, mm -hmm. who's another awesome photographer of New York. Dope. And she used to, this was before watching New York, she would take me as an assistant, and I learned a lot from Vicky. It was oh, very, wow. very good. Yeah. I learned, I try to learn a little bit from everybody. I learned a lot from Vicky. Vicky, Vicky, Vicky is a very, very good photographer. And mm -hmm. um, anyway, she took me to Harry Benson's house because okay. she was photographing him for. Oh God! Uh, I think it was Interview Magazine. She'll kill me if I don't if I don't say it right. But I, I, I think, it, but I, I think it was Interview Magazine. So anyway, we go to Harry Benson's house. Now he's like ninety, uh -huh. you know, Upper West Side. Got to go into this guy's house. Wow! Now I've seen this guy's pictures my whole wow. life. Wow! And he, we, they did the interview, and I just kind of sat back in the cut, just watching and just enjoying. And then afterwards, he. Um, he was just being chatty with us. No cameras were down, no mm -hmm. interview anymore. Yeah. And he had filing cabinets, okay? Ooh. Big filing cabinets, wow. long ones. And he said, oh, you want to see some oh, pictures? Yeah. So he started opening up these filing cabinets and there was big, I mean, pictures this, you know, as big as your TV, wow. 50 inches. Yeah. He printed all his work. Got it. And it was different than looking at it on a phone. You know, when he busted it out, he pulled the whole picture out and showed it to you. It was like, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, and he had the stories behind it were all so cool. And I'm also like you probably grew up in the 80s. Mm -hmm. You're an 80s guy. Yeah. And not to, I don't know how old you are, whatever, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, but that was a very tactical time of life. Sure. You know I mean, very tangible time of life where yep. things, you touch things and you felt things and you used film and stuff like that. So, so a quick um, question. Yeah. I'm going to segue because I think this is a great moment to ask what will someone's story about you on one of your street photography moments be? I'm not, I, I, I don't find myself worthy enough to, to talk to anybody about. I, I, I find myself to be better documenting than being documented. You know what I mean? I don't think that I have- well, truth be told, I've actually documented a few of your moments when I was with you. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Did you? A little I behind sure the scenes? I sure did, a little right, sure cool. did. I, um, I, I am uh, overwhelmed with, gratitude that people have asked me to do podcasts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I do them because mm -hmm. I like to shine a light more on the page and the brand and what it can bring to the community, which I is, in my opinion, one of my major responsibilities. Finding people that are making their own clothes, working hard for themselves, and giving them, if I can, a little platform. As far as also, you know, documenting what's going on in the streets. That's my responsibility, I think, as well. But no, I don't think, as far as a story for me, I don't know, I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I'm a <laughs> photographer, I'm a dad, I like to think I'm a good dad, yeah. I'm a good husband, friend, yeah. but I, I, you know, it doesn't go as deep as some of the people that I interview. They have such deep, meaningful, impactful stories that can change people's lives just by listening to them, you know? Yeah. People that were homeless that are now designers that are just doing incredible things. Absolutely. You know, um, I've lived a, I've lived a, thankfully, I've lived a, an easy life, you know what I mean? I had really supportive parents, mm -hmm. a really supportive artistic brother, mm -hmm. friends that have been awesome. Yeah. You know, I came from a place where I had opportunities to do, you know, and not everybody's that fortunate. And I yeah. really, appreciate when people fight through that yeah and come out like a shining diamond from yeah. you know what i mean so i look for them yeah and you, I, you do a great job that's one thing that i've noticed that you that you do and i believe we have a kinship in that because when i'm out doing it i don't do it to your degree but i find interesting people and characters yeah, out there course. and and I love to dig a little deeper. Yeah. And I think the way that you find out your information is really, really human. Mm. Because you kind of, far beyond the outfit, it starts with the outfit. It does. Because it has to, yeah. know, something has to be eye-catching. Yeah, sure. Right? But then when you ask them and, and you, you, you know, the layers start coming off, uh, <laughs> figuratively speaking, mm -hmm. um, it, you, you find out more about them and then you, you, you get your phone out. Like, no longer yeah. is the camera. Like, you, you're like, oh man, I want to document this. Yeah. And so for you to be able to find those people, and I believe that stems from 
when people are wearing what they're wearing, they're telling the story. Oh, all the way. On the outside of themselves. All the way. So yeah. that's engaging enough and it evokes the conversation. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I can't stand, now I don't, I mean, I'm sure for as many yes as you get, there's some no's, right? Of course. Because I know I know that feeling. And it's very rare because I feel like I'm a personable person. Yeah. But I there know. are some people oh, out hurts. there. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. And 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 some of the one, one thing I hate, let's talk about this. One thing that I hate is when someone dresses to the absolute nines. They leave the house. I know where you're, where you're with going the with the purpose. This, right? I mean, yeah, you know. I mean, people leave the house and they look a certain way. Yeah. And they, you know, why are you leaving the house looking like that if you don't want attention? You know, like that. I mean, come on. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> speak for anybody, but I mean, maybe you know. To me, hey, do your own thing. If it's personal and you just want to get dressed for you, get dressed for you. But I, I understand what you're saying. You know, I, I am surprised too when I see a peacock out there. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, Are you hey, a corn? <laughs> can we chat? And whoa, 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 like, what are you bothering me for? It's almost like. Oh, you didn't know somebody was going to come up and talk to you about this outfit that you're wearing today? All right, whatever. Go yeah. about your day then, whatever. But, you know, yeah, but sometimes it hurts. And yeah. sometimes um, it can throw you off a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I've, it, a couple times people got pretty aggressive with me. Mm -hmm. uh, grabbed me a couple times. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. One guy grabbed me right by the back of the shirt, yanked me back. Wow. Mm -hmm. Got very physical with me. Um, so with that said, I mean, like I said, there's a couple of different mediums, right? Like, there's... The, the photojournalism, uh, which we're not saying that that's who no, you are. No, I got you, I got you, yeah. <laughs> but then there's the, the street fashion, and then there's the street photography. Yeah. Now, I've raised this question on my street photography page uh, about what people feel and or think about um, street photography as a medium. The voyeurist, is, it, is it voyeuristic? Is it invading privacy? Is it, is it capturing art as you see it? What do you think about that as a as a conversation piece? Um, what does that look like for you? Well, I think that it is voyeuristic. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you're taking pictures without people knowing. Personally, I stopped doing that. I stopped taking pictures and posting them without people's permission because I had a couple situations that came up that morally I didn't feel right about it, you know. I took a picture of one guy holding hands with a girl and then I got a message when it was very in the in, in the infancy of the and he said that I have a girlfriend that's not my girlfriend. He said, "Can uh, you please take and he didn't know that I took his picture." Got you. So, first of all, the guy was a scumbag, but right. besides that, <laughs> he shouldn't have been doing that. Okay, right. but that's not my business. Right, right, right. You know, that's not my job to, you know, out somebody. Right. So I said, "Oh boy, that's not really very good." Also, you know, there's a lot of uh, boys and boys holding hands, girls and girls holding hands. It's not my job to out somebody if they haven't come out to their family, their friends yet. Sure. Not, that's not, you know. So now I take a candid photo as best I can, you know, and then I will go up to them afterwards and I'll say, hey, excuse me, I took a photo of you. I shoot street fashion and I like your outfit. Would yeah. you mind if I shared it on my social media? And if they say no, I, I say, all right, well, thanks anyway, you know what I mean? And I, I just get rid of the photos right there so I don't forget mm -hmm. or get confused. And then, so everybody that I post, I get consent from now. Beautiful. Yeah, for the last, Beautiful. like, about three years. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, because, you know, like I said, street fashion is different because there is that license to walk up to someone. It is still voyeuristic, though, because I am it doing is. it candidly before I talk to them. So there is still that voyeuristic feeling right. of, you know, I really try to capture the essence of the person walking through the streets, mm -hmm. carrying their groceries, whatever they're doing, you know? Because you can't duplicate that. You, you can't. can't. You can't duplicate it. So, going back to the adage of you ask for forgiveness versus permission, mm -hmm. because you want to capture it in its natural state, right? right? And then you're doing a great job by actually going up to the person afterwards and saying, hey, I, and I do that too. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I took a photo of you. Do you mind? You know, this, that, and the third, and you show them your credentials of sorts, let them know you're not a creep. But I think we both... I don't do that. I should. Right, right, right. No, but I mean, you know, I think we both have a vivid enough personality. We we present ourselves in a way that's not, you know, you know, very, you know, it's very disarming. You know, you yeah. come with a smile, you come with a great vibe. People kind of get it. Yeah. You know, because when I shoot someone and they kind of go... Oh, he looks the part. Okay. Yeah. He looks safe. You know what, though? <laughs> like, countering that, like, regardless, you should be open and kind to whoever it is that comes Absolutely. up with you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean, of course, if someone's going to be aggressive, you might have to, 
you know, balance yourself with them. But when someone comes up to you with good intentions, whatever they look like, absolutely, age, whatever, size, clothing, doesn't matter. Be fucking kind, please. Yeah. Like, just be kind to one another. It makes the day so much better. Yeah, you'll feel better about yourself. You know what I mean? Like, I'm tired of like being rude to people. Yeah. And I get it. You don't want someone sticking a camera in your face. There's a polite way to disengage with somebody. Oh no, thank you. That's all I need. Oh, all right, no problem. Have a good day. You know what I mean? Yeah. But some people get, you know, get really nasty and get really rude. And it's just not, it's not, you know, just accept, just accept you're living in New York City. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now tell me something. Uh, we're going to get nerdy here for a second. So I personally use uh, a couple of different yeah. um, types of cameras and or focal lengths, mm -hmm. right? If I know I want to go out and be you know, voyeuristic and kind of capture some mm -hmm. street photography and may kind of stumble into some street fashion as well, mm -hmm. I'll use an 85 millimeter. Mm -hmm. But if I want to get a little closer and a little bit more intimate, I'll use my Leica Q, mm -hmm. where I can get up closer because mm -hmm. it's a wider, yeah. you know, it's a 24 millimeter. Yeah. So do you have, what type of lens do you have? Because your your photos all look like your mm -hmm. stuff, like your brand. Yeah, I use a <laughs> lens. I use one lens. Yeah? I've never used anything else besides this one lens. What is that lens? Yeah, but should I say it? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I use uh, a Canon 200 millimeter 2.8 lens solely. Amazing. Only, only these lenses. Amazing. Things. It was a good challenge for me at the beginning because uh, I don't think that I'm particularly great at photography. I think that I, 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 I take pictures of what I like, mm -hmm. but I recognize other really good photographers. I, I, like Jeremy Cohen, this kid. Oh, I love Jeremy. Jeremy's Dynamo. my guy. Yeah. I, love, I saw you shoot him when he did the marathon. Yes, <laughs> I love Jeremy. But now he's a very, very talented photographer, very sound, very, he, he understands. I, 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 I think that I can do certain things good, but I don't, I would never sell myself as, oh, I'm this great photographer. I. Did this as a challenge, street sure, fashion. Sure. You know, it was never my. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. I just think that <laughs> I use that lens to challenge myself because it's a long lens, as you know. Yeah. And in New York, there's a lot of people weaving in and out. Yeah. And um, it was hard for me to capture a full image of somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but I liked the final look, and I really wanted to get better at it. So I just practiced, and that's. And then uh, I just like kind of signed a contract with myself to use that lens only. And that was Beautiful. it. I just stuck with it and all this time. Well, that really definitely uh, definitely anchors people to your brand, your look, your aesthetic, especially today. You know, when you look at a photograph, you want to say, oh, that's so-and-so's work. Yeah. And I think that's what your work does. Cool. So I appreciate that. Tell the people who you are once again and how they can find you. Johnny Cirillo. I have an Instagram, uh, Instagram account called Watching New York celebrates the greatest street fashion in New York City and, in my opinion, the world. Uh, I try to capture personalities, people that uh, have something interesting to say, and I just enjoy documenting the streets of New York City. And I think that basically sums it up. Well, thank you for once again. Thank you for joining me. Cool. Uh, right here uh, in my living room. This is amazing, and this is fun, uh, because this literally was one take. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Of us just hanging out on the yeah. couch. I totally forgot that we were recording this thing. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. So you Very got cool. the hat, the book, yeah. and uh, any other merch that you no. have? No. Oh, I did bring you, I brought you this. This is this is not merch, I'm not selling this, but this is a, a Watching New York Dude, hyper color. Are you serious? Yeah. My dad always says, you don't go somewhere mon and mo, because that's like an Italian thing. Oh my God. Go. So this that's... is, uh, it's a hyper color shirt. This is Watching New York. My brother makes these. Oh my God. My brother makes them. Hyper color. Y'all don't know about hyper color. You uh, didn't grow up in the 80s, you didn't remember hyper color. Hyper color was awesome. Yo. Until yo. your pitch started sweating, and then you were like, <laughs> that, right? It was like all, hyper color changes with heat. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, anyways, this is yet again another hang on my couch in my living room with my man Johnny Cirillo of Watching New York. And uh, it's been my pleasure once again. This is Chaz Langley. Until the next one, have a wonderful day. Take it easy. Thanks, dude. That was awesome.